well known in Atlanta and across the U.S. and actually around the world as well. So welcome, Dr. Joyce. Thank you so much. I will be talking to you today about New Thought and how this came about. Um, I'm at the age where I saw it really come into um, fruition. Uh, it came into fruition what, probably around 1911. Now, I wasn't around 1911, <laughs> but I was around in 1935 and 36 and 37 and 38. And I was always curious about some of the books that I was reading from some of the authors. I would do this in my mother's house. Uh, so for some reason, they had these books and they were unusual. But the interesting thing is that I was raised Catholic and Catholic has a duality. Catholic has a, a evil and also a, uh, a good. Um, identity with with spirituality and for some reason I was so attracted to new thought because new thought was totally totally different of course I did go to Catholic school and I grew up very Catholic I got, had my communion and my my uh, uh, confirmation and uh, at that time when I had my confirmation I took on the Holy Spirit but the, the one thing that stuck with me that I later found out with, uh, with New Thought is that the Holy Spirit is something that is in you and goes before you to make the way clear. And I have taken that Holy Spirit and made friends with that Holy Spirit and have taken that Holy Spirit into my life and for the last 86 years, I've used the Holy Spirit as one with me. Back in 1911 and, and when I was a young child, all these books were coming out, but they were rather secret. And I remember that I was very curious about the Rosicrucians, even when I was around six years of, the, of age. My, my parents had it in a, a pamphlet in the house and I would look at that uh, look at the how uh, look at the pamphlet and was fascinated with seeing auras and energy and and all of these things that we now talk about and make uh, make something of now once I, I uh, got married and uh, I became a, a Presbyterian only because it was something to do and it was the least, um, the least, it, it, I lived in Detroit, it was the least uh, commanding thing that I had to do. It, it was an easy religion. But I, I was always fascinated with reading books. So I later found out and attracted to me because we know that what you're thinking about, what you're, what you're desiring, you draw to you. I know this, that, that through the law of attraction, I'm drawing everything to me that I have. Everything, good and not so good. Well, I later found out that, that God isn't this a cop in the sky doling out tickets, and I'm the one who's getting all the tickets. I realized that I was the one that was making choices. And if I made the wrong choice, that didn't matter. I still got what I made that choice for. So I, I decided that, that I would become very aware of spiritual law. And I went to every place that I could go. Back then, uh, in my 20s and 30s, I would go to lots of lectures here, New Thought lectures. And I wish that I knew all the names of the people who, who lectured here. But oh, at one of the big hotels that's no longer here, uh, there was somebody that came in once a month or maybe once every two weeks, and I would go and I would listen. And I was so fascinated, so fascinated. And one of the things that New Thought is, 
the one power, one presence, one God. No Satan. Now, most of the people, most all people, grow up with an idea that there's some kind of terrible entity that's going to get them. It's going to get them. And I found out that that entity is only a vibration, and that is a lower vibration. There's only one power, one presence, one God. And that, and we have been privileged to be able to vibrate at a frequency where we can raise our vibration through new thought, through the way that we're now praying, through the way things that we do, we can raise our vibration and overcome so much of this discord and this, this stuff that so many people are really caught up in. Now, back in the days when, when we left London and uh, what was that, the 15, 1600s, 1700s, we, they came to America and we had all these little wagon trains and we had all these, these um, uh, people who were uh, in these little towns. The towns always had a saloon. They always had a saloon. Did you notice every movie there's a saloon, every TV there's a saloon, there's a saloon everywhere. Now, the saloon people didn't do the right thing according to some of the evangelists. And so they were uh, drinking too much and partying too much. And I'm not gonna go into some of the stuff that they say that they did, but it was naughty. So we have to say, we have to say that these evangelists would get on their horses and they'd, they'd ride into these towns and they'd have a revival. And the revival was such that you're a sinner. You're bad, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. You're gonna to go to hell. And the people believed them till they left. And then they were back at it again. But that was the time where that idea of sin became so strong that that being, being negative and having the Satan was so big. Today, as a, as a lecturer, as a teacher, as an author, as a woman who has traveled all over the world, I have seen that most of the many, not most, but many people still believe in this Satan, this terrible evil that exists in their world and trying to get into a new thought, way of thinking, one power, one presence, one God, everywhere present, everywhere, it's everywhere, this energy, and that everything is vibration and frequency, and I get to create whatever I want to create in my frequency by my kindness, by my love, by my giving, by my prayers, by all of these things, then, then what happens is they still, they do these things, and I'll bet there's some people in this audience that do it too, still believe that there's some kind of entity that's going to get them. I hope not. I hope not. But it slips in every so often for a lot of people. And one of the biggest problems that I have as a teacher and a lecturer is that these people get stuck in I've done something bad and they haven't learned to forgive themselves. They haven't learned to say, hey, I was ignorant about that. I thought it was the right thing or I made a mistake or that's what my mother told me or that's what my boss told me to do. We, we get into this place where we think that there is something terrible that's going to happen to us or that when we die, we're going to go to a burning hell. New thought wipes us away. New thought says, be loving, be kind, be generous, 
Do for others what you would have others do for you. Give. Give of your money. Give of your substance. Give whatever you can. And it says worship. Worship in a way that you praise God, but you pray to God and you thank God and you love God and you, you know that you are one with God. God is not some cop in the sky. As I said earlier, God is there for you and God is not a person. Sorry, gang, not a person. God is everywhere present. God is an energy. God is a force. God is a power. And God is everywhere. 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 And so all we have to do is set up new causes. Set up new causes and we'll get an effect. And that effect will set up another cause and get another effect. And so we got a body in motion continues to stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force. The outside force is something negative comes along, somebody throws a whammy in it. But that idea of one power, one presence, but we qualify the power. We qualify it. We make it right or we make it wrong. Sometimes we know we're doing it wrong, but we do it anyway. Now, what is our, what is our reward for that? Guilt, shame, one height of face. And that's why forgiveness is so important. Let's forgive ourselves and forgive others. Now, we have a conscious mind. We find out in new thought that everything is vibration. Everything is, is, uh, is, uh, uh, comes along with, with a, a system. And the conscious mind is that mind that observes things. It just, it sees things. It sees you, it sees you, it sees the camera. And the conscious mind brings in new thought and, and it sits there. And then after a while, it, if we hear it enough, it goes into the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is your ego mind. That's the mind that says you, did, you gotta do bad, you gotta do good, you gotta do bad. But mostly, it, it wants what it wants when it wants it, right? It wants it, and so it's gonna get it. But there is another mind and that mind is the Christ mind, the, the, the heart, the love, the kindness, the, that which is in you and in me. And what we do is we put this new thought, which is where new thought comes from, new thought into our, into our heart center, into the God center, the Christ center. And when new thought goes in, the law of attraction goes out to pull it to you, bring it to you. The law of repulsion, have you noticed that since you've been in this teaching, that certain people leave your life, certain things leave your life, certain you, you, you stop doing certain things? It's amazing what happens. It's God in action. God is always in action, whether you know it or not. So when you, when you have that law of repulsion, it's a strong word, but it's not a negative word. It says, I'm gonna push something out. I'm pushing something out. Right now, right now, we are pushing things out. We are pushing things out the way we used to do things. And you're saying, what am I gonna do? We're gonna do something. We're gonna do something, it's gonna be right. But right now, it's in the darkest before the light. Things will change. All right, then we have this, the, the law of repulsion. The law of the vacuum says we gotta let go. Let go of last year. Let go of the year before. Let go of that old marriage. Let go of that old, old partner. Let go. Let go, be here, be here in this moment. Don't let time steal your time. 
live in the moment, in the moment, right now. And when you live now, you've got everything that you can have because your thoughts, your feelings, your, your concepts are creating your new reality. But if you get it confused with the old reality and the new reality, you got a, a, a bunch of garbage there, really. And so we know that when you, when you create a vacuum, we're always saying, give to the, to the clothes closet to the, to, for the homeless. Our, our clothes, we can pack them up and put them there. We get rid of them, we put them there. We get rid of things in our house and we bring in new. It's just the way it works. You get rid of one job, you, you, call, you let go of a job, you bring in another job. Life is about replacing things. Life is about letting go. Life is, is so different than what we were trained to believe that life was. My mother had a sofa that lasted all our life. All our life. Sofa and all those other things in the house too. And when she passed, and after my father had passed, nobody wanted anything. Nobody wanted anything. They didn't want to take it home. But that's the way people are. We get attached emotionally, and the emotion should be from within. It should be within, from within. There's the law of a vibration, gang. There's a law that says, you're gonna have a good day, you're gonna have not so good a day. You're gonna have a good day, not so good a day. Good day, not so good. And, and we can't expect to have a super good day every day. But when we're in our downtime, we make the best of it. We make the best of it. So we're, we're always gonna have this up and down kind of thing. Tell, I can't tell you the last time I had a straight day. I haven't had a straight day. But when I'm in my down day, I do things differently. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I, I think I'll, I'll just hang around and go to lunch with with you or with you or I'll do something different you change you change so we have that law that is there for us so the whole thing is we ha we must decide I'm gonna be new age I'm gonna be new age I'm gonna believe in one power one presence one God everywhere present everywhere the God is with me all the time, all the time. And that I'm always setting up causes and I'm always gonna get effects. And those causes are going into the conscious mind. Then they seep down into the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is, is the mind that wants what it wants when it wants it. It's the mind where mom and dad told you how to do it. How the priests and the nuns and the, the rabbis taught you how to do it. But the Christ mind is the pure mind. It's the holy mind. It's God mind, Christ mind. And it's in you. It's in you. And this is where we all come together as one. Thank you very much. Yeah, I enjoyed speaking to you.